Hey, my friends, Toby Wan Shinobi here, and today I've got a video for you. We are breaking down every secondary weapon in Chapter 4, Season 3 of Fortnite. What's a secondary weapon, you might ask? Well, that would be a weapon that you would pair with a shotgun to finish off an enemy. You hit him with your shotgun, you swap to the secondary and finish him off, or vice versa. These are guns like SMGs, pistols, flapjack AR, repeater AR. These all work great as secondary weapons, and we're going to break down everything about them. Their recoil, their time to kill, their time to kill paired with a shotgun, their effective range, and just overall tips and tricks of how to use these weapons most effectively so that you are more effective in combat. And without further ado, let's get into it. Oh, actually, really quick, before we do jump in, if at any point you feel like this video is providing you with incredible value or it's just really helpful, a little light goes off in your head that goes, wow, this is good stuff. I'm glad I know that. Consider leaving a like on the video it helps me tremendously it helps me get seen by the algorithm the, my entire channel you know i put a lot of effort into these videos and i hope you can see that and if you find the video helpful please give it a like i would really appreciate it all right thank you so much now let's get into the video all right let's kick things off with the combat smg now i will say the combat smg has recently become my favorite secondary weapon in fortnite and that is purely because of the absurdness of how fast this thing kills enemies check this out that is all body shots, and uh, yeah, I just don't think there's really many other guns in this game that can compare to that other than like a heavy sniper headshot, <laughs> you know? I mean, sometimes it even feels like just using the SMG instead of the shotgun SMG combo is faster because this thing just kills so fast that like the swap actually can screw you up and sometimes it just doesn't feel worth it. So I'll make some notes about this weapon, general notes, the strengths, the weaknesses. First off, the strength. This gun is absurdly fast at killing people we just saw. It's actually got very good fall off distance, like meaning that like, uh, you know, it does 21 damage here with a gold, actually we'll go blue, sorry. We should compare all blue weapons here. So uh, 19 damage is the max it'll hit with a blue. And then you come out here to 50 meters out and it's hidden for 17. So really not a lot of fall off. So one of the major weaknesses of this weapon is the vertical recoil on it, right? So again, we're hidden for 19 with a blue combat at that range. Now we're hidden for 17. The damage fall off is not really a factor, but what is a factor is the vertical recoil. This thing kicks like an angry mule, right? So you've got to master the recoil to get good with this weapon. It's got really, really aggressive recoil. But if you learn to master that recoil, you can kill enemies even from 50 meters out. Barely got her. She's standing still. So really 50 meters out is not an effective range for the combat SMG, but if you had to and they were standing still, you could do pretty good damage. The effective range that I like to use the combat SMG at is about 30 meters. At 30 meters with any rarity of this gun, you're gonna be able to kill your enemy very, very quickly as long as you're controlling that recoil well. Now I will note there are two ways to control recoil on any SMG or any automatic weapon in Fortnite. There's an easy way and there's a hard way. The easy way is aiming below your enemy's feet about here i mean it just depends on what kind of gun you're using this has a lot of vertical recoil i'm aiming pretty low here and then you just let it stay on their body automatic weapons in fortnite have a maximum vertical recoil meaning that if you start down low the gun will automatically kick up and then it will reach a certain height and it will not exceed that height from there on out so basically you don't really have to control the recoil, but you will miss the first five or six bullets out of your clip, depending on how fast this weapon shoots. So it's not like the most efficient thing, right? It's very good if you're not good at controlling recoil. It's much more efficient to just like master the recoil on the weapon and just pull down at an even rate as you fire it. So like that. I'm not wasting the magazine. I'm hitting more shots. And I can also just tap the trigger a little bit too, like that. And then, uh, it's a little more effective. So with all spray weapons, you're going to get a little more accuracy out of them if you are feathering the trigger. And it's really like micro feathers. You hold down, you let go, hold down, you let go, hold down. It's really, really quick releases so that that bloom doesn't get out of control and that recoil doesn't get too far out of control. And you kind of save your magazine and your accuracy there, as well as crouching down with all SMGs or all automatic weapons. If you're crouching down, your bloom is going to tighten. See this? See, I stand up, my bloom is large. Larger, crouch down, it gets tighter. So if you catch an enemy off guard and they don't see you, go ahead and crouch down because it's going to tighten that spread of the bullets and it's just going to make things a lot easier for you. 
Oh, and just a note with the combat SMG, I really recommend aiming down sights with it when you can. It just makes that bloom so much tighter. You see how much tighter the bullet spread is on this weapon when I'm aiming down sights? The hip fire on it is okay, but it really has bad, 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 bad hip fire when you're jumping around in the air or you're shock waving. That is one of the biggest weaknesses of this weapon is the poor in-air accuracy. So I would not recommend jumping around and hip firing this weapon. It's okay hip firing. Um, if you're not jumping around, it does an okay job. But if you're jumping around, flying through the air, shock waving, whatever, it's just really not good unless you're right up on your enemy. So that's uh, my general recommendation is always try to be aiming down sights. It's one of the few weapons that I will just like almost always aim down sights because if you can land all those shots, you just do an absurd amount of damage that your enemy, even if you're standing fairly still, is going to have a very hard time beating you because it just kills so fast, right? So yeah, those are some general notes on it. This gun is extremely strong at mid range and close range. All right, so now let's cover the time to kill or the TTK of this weapon at 20 meters out. And just a note, we're going to basically do every one of these weapons from 20 meters out just to keep things standard. We're gonna try to avoid headshots. We will show you the headshot multiplier here. So let's just do a body shot. 19. Headshot 33. So it's almost a two times damage multiplier for headshots. But with all these spray weapons, I really wouldn't recommend ever going for headshots. So we're just kind of going to ignore headshot damage for the most part. Generally, you should just be aiming at like chest. And if you capture it, a little bit of headshot damage, great. But I wouldn't rely on trying to hit headshots only because these weapons kick. OK, so 20 meters out with a blue rarity combat SMG. Time to kill test. Here we go. Now we're doing a weapon swap speed. So from 10 meters out, we hit the enemy with a shotgun and then we swap. Blue rarity, white pump. So that is a shotgun SMG time to kill combo right there. And check out the swap speed of this weapon. Fairly fast. Again, the TTK of the shotgun and the swap. Hip fire shotgun swap. Very good. All right, so that's pretty much everything with the combat SMG. Again, with this weapon, I like to aim down sights. I love to use it for a right shoulder peek and line up a shot on an enemy that is rushing towards me because you can just delete their existence in a second if they get caught and running a straight line because this thing shoots so many bullets and does so much damage. That's what it's really good for. All right, let's move on to the next weapon. Now let's talk about the OG submachine gun. This is just the SMG, the submachine gun. The strengths of this weapon are one, that it has pretty good hip fire accuracy. The aim down sights is very inaccurate, but the hip fire is about the same. So you really don't have to aim down sights when using this weapon. The other big bonus that it has is that it basically has no recoil. So I'm not pulling down my mouse. It basically just has no vertical recoil. Has a little bit of shake, a little bit of inaccuracy, but that's the big negative of this weapon is that it's just very inaccurate, you know? So at 20 meters out here, um, it kind of just sprays all over the place. We can get the kill because it's got a large magazine size, but honestly, it just has a lot of uh, randomness to the bloom pattern, the spray pattern of the bullets. So in my honest opinion, I just would take the combat SMG over this SMG 10 times out of 10 in any single situation because the combat has more accuracy at longer ranges as long as you can learn to control that recoil. But as a controller player, you might really like that submachine gun and that's totally fine. I've heard that it has a very good aim assist. It's got a fairly large magazine and you don't have to deal with controlling that recoil. And another great thing about this gun is if you land at a POI, you know, off your drop and you find this gun and you go up against a shotgun user, you actually have pretty good odds of beating them because of the large size clip. You can just kind of like miss some shots here and there and you'll still be able to kill them because you've got such a large magazine size and also you don't have to control that recoil so it just makes it a little bit easier to be like jumping around hip firing this weapon um, against like a shotgun so it's a pretty good off the drop kind of weapon in a close range fight but again 10 times out of 10 I would not take this weapon over the combat SMG once you learn how to master the combat SMG this is just a inferior weapon I believe in every category okay so now let's talk about the effective range on this weapon we're hitting for 18 out here and now now we go out to 50 meters and we're hitting for eight. So it's got a very, very severe damage fall off. And also you really just can't use this weapon at this range uh, because 
the inaccuracy of the bullets. The bloom is too bad on it that it's just so inconsistent at this range that I just wouldn't recommend it past 30 meters. So you come to 30 meters and you get decent damage and you start to hit more shots. So 30 meters is about the max range I would use this weapon. Uh, you're much better off just using like an AR at this range or ranges past this, you know. So yeah, that's pretty much the effective range is about 30 meters because of the severe damage fall off and the crazy bloom on it. Now, let's look at a time to kill at 20 meters out of a blue submachine gun. So aiming down sights, here we go. Pretty good. Not fantastic, but pretty solid. Now, this is not aiming down sights because this is one of the strengths of this weapon is you don't have to aim down sights. And yeah. Pretty darn similar. Now let's cover the weapon swap speed here. From 10 meters out, white shotgun to the chest. Blue SMG to finish. So there's the swap speed time right there. And yeah, that is the submachine gun. All right, now let's talk about the tactical pistol. The tactical pistol was one of my favorite weapons in chapter four, season one, but recently I feel like it's been overshadowed by a lot of really good secondary weapons. I will say that the flapjack assault rifle is basically a better version of the tactical pistol at this point. The magazine on the flapjack AR is just insane. It has very good medium range. I'd say even better range than the tactical pistol, and it pretty much just out shines it in every way. So that's just my general note. But some of you might really like a tactical pistol and that is perfectly fine. We're gonna break this weapon down. So let's talk about the strengths and weaknesses of the tactical pistol. The strength of it is that it's got a very good headshot multiplier. 50 damage versus 25. So it's a two times multiplier for headshots. So that's great and you can kind of like go for headshots a little bit more as long as you let those shots kind of reset and you're not shooting too fast because then it becomes a little inaccurate. So if you go for like, you know, fairly consistent headshots. If you like catch an enemy off guard, you can line up that initial headshot and then just spray the rest of the body. And it's pretty good. It's really a, a very solid weapon. The problem is it's got such a small magazine and it's really not good at hip fire. So as you can see here, I'm hip firing from 25 meters out, which most weapons are pretty darn effective at that. But the tactical pistol is not that great at hip firing from that range. So when you use the tactical pistol, you pretty much want to be aiming down sights at long ranges like this. And, you know, it's OK. But we didn't kill that enemy right there in a single magazine, we had to reload, and the Flapjack AR would just never have that problem. Just telling you how it is. So that's kind of its weakness, is the small magazine. Now, if you have a mythic version of this, if you have the quick reload perk, it can be pretty good. So the effective range here of the tactical pistol, we hit from 18 meters out, we're hitting for 25, so 25 is max body, and then we go all the way out to, say, 50 meters, and we're heading for 21. So it doesn't have terrible damage fall off, but at this range right here, you will start to get a lot of spread on the weapon. And because you have such a small magazine, it makes it very difficult to hit your target unless you're basically crouched down, standing still and putting slow shots on your enemy. But even if they're moving around, you're probably going to run out of ammo in your magazine before you can kill them. So that's kind of the biggest weakness. And that's really the reason I don't really recommend the uh, tactical pistol. Now, let's just talk about the recoil of the tactical pistol. So we're going to be 25 meters out here. You can see this is a white tactical pistol here. And it's got pretty good recoil. Recoil isn't really something you have to worry about on these weapons. It's more about the bloom of the shot. So here's a gold version. You know, not a lot of recoil there and a much tighter bloom. So the gold is obviously a much better. Mythic is even better than a gold. All right, so now let's do the TTK at 20 meters out with a blue tactical pistol. Here we go. So as you can see, it does an okay job, but again, we almost just ran out of our magazine before we killed the enemy. And uh, you know, that's not really ideal because People are jumping around. You're probably going to miss a couple shots and then you're going to have to switch to a shotgun to finish or even your primary. All right. So now let's do the 10 meter out TTK and swap. So that is a shotgun to the chest and body shots to the chest with a pistol. So this weapon swap speed is pretty good.
and yeah, so that's about what I have to say about the blue pistol. Again, I just think it's overshadowed at this point by all the other great secondary weapons that we have. Maybe if they get nerfed or the, you know, the meta changes up, the tactical pistol will shine again. But for now, it's just not as good as it once was. All right, now let's talk about another great secondary weapon in this meta, and that is the flapjack rifle. The flapjack rifle is being considered a secondary weapon here because it really feels like a medium range, right? Like you can hit fire this thing at this distance and it's pretty darn consistent. I mean, it's better to feather the trigger and let the bloom reset a little bit, but at this range right here, you know, 25 meters, you could pretty much throw it in the ring with SMGs. Uh, and then if you aim down sights, it's even better. The strengths that this weapon has is that it's got a very large magazine size. So you can put a lot of pressure on enemies. You can tear down structures, walls, whatever you need to do, and you can just keep the pressure on, right? It's really great at that. Also, it's got pretty gosh darn good in-air accuracy. So as you see, I'm walking around right here. You see the bloom here. Now I'm jumping around and the bloom doesn't increase all that much. So when you're jumping around, with this weapon and uh, hip firing while jumping is actually very good. So it's very good with shock waves, soaring sprints, that sort of thing, because in air accuracy is very solid on this weapon. Uh, more so than a lot of SMGs and pistols, which is kind of surprising for assault rifle, which is also why I'm throwing it in the secondary weapon category. The next thing I really like about this weapon is the swap speed. It's a lot faster than your typical AR. So check this out. You see how fast that is? It's like, it's kind of like abnormally fast, it seems. Um, so yeah, swap speed on this weapon is great. So that makes it a great secondary weapon as well. Now, the main weaknesses with this weapon, the spread of the bloom for sure. If you just lay down on the trigger with this thing, you know, we're 30 meters out. If I just lay down on the trigger, it's pretty bad. You know, hit fire, pretty bad. But that magazine makes up for it a little bit, you know, because you don't have to be as precise with your shots. You got a lot of bullets, so you can kind of just hold down and from 30 meters out when we're aiming down sights it's great but hip fire you know the bloom gets a little wild and from really far out you know like 60 meters it's really just not that effective like as an ar right like it'd be a lot better to just use an mk at this range unless you're really gonna feather that trigger and in that case you know it's still an mk is better so really i use it as an smg but it's got like kind of more of an extended range than an smg and a little more flexibility because of that large magazine size uh you can just you know put a lot of pressure on people you know it's a lot of bullets flying at people and they don't really get a chance to peek <laughs> you can just shred their cover the weakness there is that really it's got bad bloom so don't use it really as an ar i wouldn't recommend it as an ar the mythic version is very good at longer ranges but not really long ranges. It's nothing like an MK, right? It doesn't compete with the MK. It competes with SMGs. The second weakness is that it just has no scope. So from really far ranges, it's also going to be pretty hard to hit people just because you can't zoom in. You know, it's kind of hard to see them and also the crazy bloom on it. So those are the weaknesses, but it's got a lot of strengths going for it. Okay, so the effective range of this weapon, right? We do 28 damage with the blue from about 20 meters out or so. And now we're going out to 50 meters or 60 meters here and we're doing 26. So the fall off of this weapon is actually pretty darn good. You're not getting a whole lot of fall off damage, so it's pretty consistent. But again, that bloom is really what becomes the problem at this kind of range right here. You really have to feather the trigger. Um, and if you're crouched, it's even better. So if you're gonna use this weapon at longer ranges, I definitely recommend crouching because that's gonna tighten the bloom. You get a nice little tighter bloom when you're crouching versus standing up. And then also firing in about bursts of five or six bullets at a time while aiming towards their feet because it's gonna kick up a little bit into their chest and uh, you'll be capturing solid damage there. So about five or six bullets at a time, check this out, feathering it. And again, it's just not going to compare to an MK Alpha assault rifle because it just doesn't have uh, that same consistency. Like that was a lot faster, but you're not going to get that every time. You know, it's going to be a lot more inaccurate. But with a gold version and a mythic version, you're going to be just fine hitting people from, out from uh, this far away because the recoil or the bloom is much better on the gold and mythic version. At that point, 60 meters out is totally doable, but with a blue and lower, you're gonna kind of struggle. And that's fine because most of the time I'm using this weapon, I'm just using it as an SMG. All right, so here's the time to kill at 20 meters out with a blue flapjack aiming down sights. Pretty decent. Now we're hit firing the weapon from 20 meters out, blue flapjack. 
pretty decent. So as you can see, the hip fire accuracy on this thing is pretty good, especially when you're just standing still like that. All right, now let's do a little uh, TTK on the shotgun swap from 10 meters out. Solid damage and very quick swap speed. And again, the best thing about this weapon is kind of the flexibility about it, right? It's got further range than a typical SMG. It's got a large magazine and you really can kind of do a lot of things with it, put a lot of pressure on the players with it. So that's what makes it one of my favorite secondary weapons in this season. All right, now let's talk about the explosive repeater rifle. This gun I've got a love-hate relationship for because honestly, it's got way too many things going for it. It's got incredible splash damage, so you can pretty much just miss your enemy and still be doing damage to them, which is just absolutely insane. It's got crazy hip fire accuracy as well, so I could just be, you know, hip firing and landing shots very consistently, and if I miss, I get that splash damage. It can be used as a secondary weapon because it's basically a double pump. Kills very fast when you keep swapping between a shotgun and the repeater. It's also got insane capability when you have shockwave grenades. Because of that splash damage, you don't have to be landing accurate shots on your enemy. You can be shockwaving above them and uh, be doing crazy damage to them, and they really can't do much about it because the explosion of this gun makes it very difficult to see what's going on. You've got this big old pillar of black smoke in your face, and you really can't see what's happening. And if someone's in the sky hitting you with this weapon, it's just just a nightmare, an absolute nightmare. And really, it's pretty much a losing situation, especially if they have soaring sprints and shockwaves with two repeater rifles and they can just keep doing this to you. Uh, it's, you know, not a fun experience to say the least. And I think it needs a nerf, to be honest. I'm hoping it gets one, but for now, this is what we've got. People are rocking uh, double repeaters and doing that to people while they fly around with soaring sprints and shockwaves, and it's kind of gross. The next big thing that this has going for it is that it does damage through vehicles. Somebody can get in a car and they are not safe. You just hit the outside of the vehicle kind of near where the enemy is within the splash radius and you're going to be doing the same amount of damage as if they were just running around free. You get high ground with this thing and it's a real problem for enemies. Even if they're in cover, you can shoot round cover, you know, and hit them. If they get in a vehicle, you can shoot the vehicle, hits them. So yeah, very strong weapon and also very good as a secondary weapon at close range. Another crazy thing that this weapon has going for it is the headshot damage. It's basically like, you know, a weak sniper. You hit two headshots with a blue and you're killing the player in zero build. 252 damage every time if you land two headshots, which can happen fairly quick. Someone's peeking their head out of a port of fort They don't see you. Uh, very easy to hit that 126 on them and then push them and it makes the fight very easy. Body shots are also pretty crazy with this thing doing 72 damage to the blue. All right, now let me really quickly show you the shockwave strategy that people use with this gun. I've done it myself. It's crazy powerful, especially if you have two repeaters, which uh, at that point, that's gross. Please don't do that to people. <laughs> it's very toxic <laughs> and it's a little overpowered. It's too overpowered, let's be honest. So you shockwave up and you just keep um, doing that to people and they really can't do anything because they can't see what's happening to them. Let me just give you a, a visual of what's happening when you're being hit by this thing. And that's also what makes it really good at close range too because when you hit people, there's this big black pillar of smoke that pops around them and it's really hard to fight back. Even if you miss shots with this thing, you can win fights because it's so hard for the enemy to see you. It's something that I realized about using this weapon. I realized like I'm winning way more close range fights with this weapon. Why is that happening? I seem to be missing a good amount of shots and I'm only doing 40 for splash damage. What's happening here? Well, what's happening is it's basically smoke grenades. You've got smoke grenades as well. Like people can't see what's happening. Let me show you my screen so you can get an idea of what I'm talking about. Give me my weapons back. So I hope that helps you visualize what I'm talking about with the whole smoke grenade thing. It's very hard to fight someone when they're jumping around doing that to you and you've got these pillars of smoke and just smoke around you. It's very hard to find your enemy. It's disorienting. Now the next thing I will say is that the only weakness this weapon really has is the fact that it's a projectile weapon, meaning that you have to lead your shots. You have to lead your shots and it's kind of weird. I don't know if it's like the scope distance, the fact that it doesn't have a scope or what, but it feels different than a normal heavy sniper or something that's similar. It just feels weird. 
weird. Like the bullets are slower. I could be wrong. It's kind of hard to hit body shots or head shots at long ranges when people are moving around. But that doesn't really matter because you can just aim for kind of like their feet. And if you happen to hit their foot, you get 72 damage. If you miss, you get 40 damage. So that's pretty much how most people use it at longer ranges. And again, very good on high ground because you get uh, very easy splash damage. When you're up in the air, it's easier to hit those splash shots. Um, so yeah. All right, so now let's just really quickly talk about the TTK from 20 meters out. Honestly, the TTK isn't really a factor here because we're not just gonna be using this weapon. You wanna combo this weapon with another one of them. So if we wanna show you a TTK, we can show you two being swapped here, just to give you an idea. So pretty good. Definitely not as fast as like just a combat SMG or something, but pretty solid for, you know, a long range rifle. Now, if you hit headshots, uh, it's insane, right? That's just super crazy. The chances of doing that is pretty slim, but if someone's standing still, you could definitely do a double swap like that and catch them off guard and kill them. So double repeaters is definitely a problem and I hope it gets nerfed, but maybe not, we'll see. Epic has been on break for a while, but uh, they might come back and fix it. Okay, now let's show you the TTK of this weapon from 10 meters out comboed with the White Havoc. So body shots only. So as you can see, it's nothing crazy, but people are using this weapon as a double pump at close range and they're winning all kinds of fight because of that smoke effect, right? When you get shot with this thing, it's so much visual noise on your screen, it's really hard to fight back. Combine that with the ability to be able to shockwave up and just do damage on people very consistently, it's crazy. Like it just has a lot going for it. Even if it's not doing the most damage, it's just doing very consistent damage. It's pretty much impossible to miss with this weapon unless you're shooting past their shoulder and it's just going off into the distance. So the TTK from a pure speed standpoint is not that crazy, but when you get that smoke effect, it just kind of makes the weapon really annoying to deal with, really hard to fight against. And here's the swap speed of the weapon, just to give you an idea. You kind of get an idea already, but Do you see how far I'm missing her? <laughs> I'm shooting over here and it's still hitting her, which is crazy. That's just, you know, <laughs> that's the problem with this gun. That's why it, it's so good. It can be used by pretty much anyone just as effective as anyone else. All right, so that is the repeater in a nutshell. Uh, again, a very powerful weapon and I think it does need a bit of a nerf. I think people have had their fun with it and it's time to give it a little nerf, balance it a little bit. And the last thing I'm gonna talk about because I know somebody's gonna bring it up is the white twin mag SMG. You can still get the white twin mag SMG from Aura. I think it's the Hitches and Ditches trailer park near Frenzy Fields or near the jungle. But yeah, you can kill her and get the twin mag, the white twin mag. So I just wanna show you it from 20 meters out, the TTK, here we go. So there's a reason that I don't go and kill Ara because you can't upgrade this weapon. It's just not upgradable because it's just the white version. You just can't do it. It's just like a little like kind of Easter egg. But as you can see, it's not crazy damage from 20 meters out because you have to reload. Now paired with a shotgun from 10 meters away, it's actually still pretty solid. Still pretty good TTK. You don't run out of the clip like you do from 20 meters out just using it by itself. All right, guys, so that was the chapter four, season three, secondary weapon breakdown. I hope it was helpful. If it was helpful, please drop a like on the video. It helps me so much. If you like this type of content, consider subscribing. I've got a lot more value for you, especially if you're a zero build player or you have any interest in zero build. That's what I specialize in. I'm trying to improve your zero build gameplay. If you check out my channel, I think you're gonna like what you see. All right, thank you so much for watching. Have yourself a great day. Shinobi out. Yeah.